First of all, thank you very much for the introduction, and it's a great pleasure and privilege to be with you here this second day. Let me tell you up front that yesterday I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the meetings, and I enjoyed everyone I met from you, even for a few minutes of contact. But it seems that like I'm going to have uh, uh, friends for the rest of life. And uh, if you allow me, that this family is where I belong, what I believe. So no introduction. Today, you're going to have a few problems with me. First of all, I pre put aside the prepared written speech. <laughs> Second, I didn't sleep well. I slept a couple of hours. I don't know why. Uh, third, it's 8.30 in the morning. I mean, why do you need a speech at 8.30 in the morning? <laughs> well, I'm going to, what I uh, decided, I have a great coach right here and a great friend. And publicly, I told her that I'm going to tell her husband that we're going to be friends lifetime. So I need you all witness, a great distinguished Joe who's going to take over from me right when I finish. Now, let me share with you a journey that hasn't finished yet. And I would like to conclude this, uh, this 20 minutes by putting one agenda item in addition in front of you to think about and reflect. And this one agenda item, I'm going to put it in an SMS up front for the sake of time. It's knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge. And I want you to think if there is one thing that we need to do for the world today, what will be it? Well, I started, as you probably know, I'm Egyptian. I'm Egyptian by birth. I'm proud Egyptian, by the way. Egyptian by birth, by nationality. And I got my brainwashing on the east coast of the United States, in a place called MIT. But my heart is in the developing world, and my destiny is in a global better world. And I think this is something we share. And after I finished all the math, the sciences of MIT, by the way, I come from a double E, computer science, and then I was not fulfilled, so I said, I like the real world. Let's go to management and business. I was not fulfilled, so I did a joint program. Okay, and this is where I got my basic academic background, interdisciplinary across different fields, and try in search of how can we make a difference on ground. Take what we learn to practice and take the challenges of practice back to think about. Think capital letters is very important word in my life. Research is very important. But research by itself is meaningless if I don't apply it on the ground. So I am there, this guy, who goes, I was asked, what do you do? The most difficult question that I have in life, because I don't really know what I do. Huh? I always evade the answering the question by saying that by night I dream, sometimes if I sleep, <laughs> and the next day I go and implement the dream. My dream at MIT was to try to help the developing world, my country, the have-nots, the poor. And I was lucky enough that I had a crazy guru by the name of Peter Keen, who was on Vogue at the time, invented the field of information decision support systems, which came from Carnegie Mellon computer science, uh, for, from uh, Carnegie Mellon decision making and MIT computer science, integrating it, having forefront 1978, first book in information decision support systems. And for the following decade, I was the product. Uh, first PhD to the, in this field. So I was young with a short, but the highest paid person in the in the East Coast of the United States. And I went and did everything for corporate America. And then one day a friend of mine told me, 
He became, by the way, the, the uh, Minister of Finance in uh, Turkey. He was working for the, the World Bank, Kamal Darwish. And he told me, Hisham, why, don't you, why do you talk about the developing world? If you believe in it, go and do, fix, do something about it. So I left <coughs> the post at MIT, and I went with a crazy dream to try to accelerate economic and social development in Egypt. And the dream was to build one information and decision support center that helped the top decision making of the country make a better decision. The assumption was that if he makes a better decision, everything will be. And if you do that continuously, you can accelerate economic and social development. Well, 15 years later, instead of building one information decision support center in the cabinet of Egypt, I discovered that I built 1,500 centers in every ministry, in every governorate, in every city, in every district, and in one third of the villages. And starting from a couple of people to 40,000 people working in a country which is data rich, information poor, lousy decision making, everything is unstructured, no information. Started structured projects around building databases about the legislations which go back to 1824, digitizing every single part of the economy uh, in every single department. So started, the country started to put light using info, using, and top down and bottom up, the country started a new march. And on the way, after a couple of years, we started getting first prize awards in the world, in every single, every single thing, information systems, management science, operational research. The best of Egypt, young chefs came and building a new army of technocrats putting to work close to decision makers and marching an economic reform which is next to none. And Egypt growth started to go up from reducing the debt of Egypt from $44 billion to $29 billion to full privatization program, full uh, employment slash unemployment um, networks, etc., etc. You can search all of this only. Introducing the internet to Egypt, to Arab world, to Africa. Lots of projects on the way, up to the digitization of culture in the Egyptian Museum, in Coptic Museum, etc. The whole idea is information for development. What we didn't plan for that is a society that has transformed from industrial age into an information age. These young kids, young chefs, young graduates became an army of innovation. Building an institution, the institution we built, we used to build it by the book, different from the bureaucratic organization that was there. So an organization that's effective, that's efficient, that's socially responsible, that's no smoking, something which is totally strange in, in a developing world. People were looking earlier to us like, who are these strangers? In a few years, we became the heroes and the gurus. After a decade, we became political threat to many. Just out of this tiny organization, in the following decade, about 34 ministers were no nominated, those young chefs that I appointed, and two prime ministers. This shows either something good or something bad about, again, the integration of these young groups. Having said all of that and all these remarkable compliments that were taken about information and the use of information, that we are the best in the developing world, etc., 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 but the country really has not developed. What we did, I did not pay attention to is the significance of politics, politicians, corruption, uh, that take place in spite of whatever is happening. Well, instead of continuing all this accelerated growth, we faced with all the prerequisites, 
that led to the revolution. And there was a confrontation. How much of uh, Chatham rule are we applying here? No, it's Chatham rule. So I cannot say everything. OK, I'm, you, you can guess. OK, by end of 90, there was sort of confrontation and split where people who believe in what should be done went to one course, and other people went to another course. Then years later, those other people who went to the other course went straight to prison. This group, the, other, the, the group of the solidarity group, like, were basically among those who have made the revolution and a new Egypt has been reborn. 10 years later, 15 years later, again, the agenda has not been completed because Egypt and so many other countries with the, period, with the proposition or the hypothesis that information can accelerate growth did not take place because of the political discontinuity that we did not take enough care of the governors from a political point of view and others. Now picking up again. What are some of the lessons? Before that, let me, let me share with you. The success of the 80s and 90s were so uh, attractive to an extent that replicas of this went to the Arab world, to countries in Africa. Maybe in another speech we can share some of these examples. But it is so interesting when you put a new words in the vocabulary of practice. So the word information and decision support center became on the agenda. The word information and society were on the agenda of every country in the Arab world. The word information and society has been on the agenda of Africa with the Economic Commission of Africa. A simple thing, in my opinion, I led to put an initiative and got the endorsement of 40 countries. Difficult, yes, but simple compared to other things. However, the impact was just phenomenal. Because later on, the centers that you put for kids in the villages of Africa, the internet, etc., etc., 15, 20 years later, you see huge impact. So you just put the seeds, you build consensus, you build team, you build harmony across continent, across boundaries, and things evolve if it's right. The challenges now, just I'm going to give you figures by figures very quickly. Egypt, when I was born, it was 20 million. The world was about a billion. Today is 80 million, 80 something. I'm just going to make simple. Uh, it's going to be doubled by year 2050. The Arab world today, again, I'm going to make it simple. It's 360 million, 67 million say 400 million, by year 2050, it's going to be 800 million, double. Within less than four decades, this region is going to double. All right? Two-thirds of the population is under 20. Africa is a billion. Again, I'm uh, making s strong approximation here. It's going to be two billion. If we think from here and think about our issues only. On the backyard, you'll have 800 million, and behind that, 2 billion. If we continue not doing anything about what's going on, there is 40% poverty, there is 30% illiteracy, these, the countries are at the bottom of quality education, the country are at least in terms of women empowerment, half of the society at least is out. The countries are in the least brackets, I don't want you to bore you with, with figures, in terms of entrepreneurship, etc., etc., etc. Unemployment, the best country is 14, 15% unemployed. Something needs to be done. Again, top-down, 
and bottom up. Either we say it's none of our business, our business is just to bomb some, or to leave it away after we bomb, or we say that there is a moral responsibility with the cost of bombing one day, we can build 1,000 schools. We can build 4,000 kindergarten. We can build a Harvard or an MIT in every country of this region. Okay? And I feel that this is a responsibility of the 21st century citizen. Because at the end, we need to leave, to leave behind one sustainable world for our kids. We don't want to leave them with more and more of the bloodshed that we see on the CNN and BBC daily, and now by the hour, and tomorrow will be by the second, if we don't take care of it today. So what's the challenge? What's, what's the ever challenge, challenge? Is to bring the have-nots in stream. What is our agenda? I, I would say something that I'm doing this fall, woman. Because this is an important and an easy win. Why don't we put an initiative for women across countries of the Mediterranean? I'm inviting, by the way. Okay? I'm not going to do it, but I'm, gonna, I'm inviting. The leaders, many of them I know, others I don't know, but those who believe in women leadership, that it's important, come. Those who believe women empowerment, come. Women inclusion, come. Girls education, come, etc. Put the best of women to put the best agenda for the initiative, regional and national, to get it moving. Second, youth. We talk about youth. We enjoy conferencing about youth. But how much have we done in youth? Just one example. 85, 86, I put an ad to train 50,000 youth on computers. I'm crazy about investing in, uh, in education. Nobody applied. By year 1999, we used to train 300,000 per year. One institution through multiple operators. The message is can be done. You need to focus, you need to push for the dream, and you push the envelope. Okay, so we need to get youth properly trained, and instead of getting a gun and killing someone, we need to get them to the e-information age, to the digital age. Third, poverty. There is a project today that I'm privileged to be part of it, to create a million jobs in one year in 4,740 villages. I was personally surprised that it got the highest agenda attention of the government, for obvious reasons. I was even more surprised that they put 10 billion on this project. But the challenge is, and I, here I'm inviting all of you with this wonderful experience that I've seen from Philippines to everywhere. Yesterday I was reflecting. We need the know-how to deliver sustainable micro and small and medium-sized business to make a real difference. To change the concept from a village which is consuming to a village that is sufficient to a village that is exporting, to a village that's as well, sorry, the village is producing and exporting after that. We need to do the, a paradigm shift at the grassroots today, not tomorrow. And the money is there, so we are not talking about fundraising. We're talking about putting hands together to get a job done. Because if we do the first 100,000, the rest of the million is will be taken care of. And if you do the million, the rest is going to be taken care of, and then the accelerator is going to take place. And if we do one country, which is Egypt, 
the land of culture, peace, religious, harmony, love, the rest of the region is going to take care of. So my message to you and to all of you, I, th I shared with Joe yesterday, just by co total coincidence, a goal of mine to create the first World Knowledge Fund. Initially, I wanted to do it to make money. And then, two years later, I said, well, I'm going to donate 50% of it for donation. Today, getting older, not old, <laughs> I feel, by the way, I feel 30. I said that I'm going to donate all the money that I'm going to make huh, for a foundation that takes care of people who goes to Harvard, MIT, etc. And in addition, I put together a foundation in the States that helped stimulate others to do funds for knowledge with a focus to Arab world and Africa. And we're ready to serve every single company who's interested to make money or interested, any company who is interested to make a social investment as well, free of charge, or with donation that will go to, to, to young chefs to focus, to build the youth of the current and the future generation. Without this, I don't see the world going forward in terms of inclusion, but rather into, I, I see it more and more going in terms of divide. So the one word that I would like to leave with you is again, an, uh, setting an agenda and integrating all the great efforts that you're doing around knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. And I thank you very much.